Hello, everyone. Welcome to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I'm your host and head witch, Miss Solaris Blue Ribbon, at the helm this evening. I want to give a shout out to everybody at Revolution Radio, staff, producers, listeners, chat room, and thank everybody for tuning in tonight. And we are 100% listener supported, so if you like what you're hearing, please click on the donate button. We appreciate your support and thank you for any contribution you can make to this excellent station. And you are listening to Studio A. And a happy solstice and litha to all pagans, witches, brothers, and sisters of the craft out there and anyone who celebrates. May the sun brighten your hearts and the dark tides to come. And may you always have the stars to shine and show you the way home. And my special guest this evening is Misha Johnston. In 1992, she founded the Star Family Contactee Groups. These groups are for people who are experiencers, men, women, teens, and children who are contactee experiencers abducted by ETs. She started the first teen and children's groups in the United States in 1994. Misha was the director of UFO CCI, UFO Contact Center International and Celestial Contacts of Nevada. Misha was a working group member of Stephen Greer's CSETI in Las Vegas, Nevada. Misha moved to San Diego in 1998 and was the coordinator of the Art Bell Chat Club, San Diego chapter, and continued her research. She has been interviewed on many radio shows and has spoken at UFO conventions throughout California, Colorado, and Nevada. Misha is a second-generational experiencer. She had her first experience at age three. She had numerous contacts and abductions and has been involved with at least five different alien types, greys, insectoids, mammalians, reptilians, and human-looking groups. Most were positive experiences. Misha has also had many MyLab experiences and been in the underground bases, which included a black ops branch of our government and some service to self gray and reptilian factions. Misha was born into an MK Ultra family and was accessed through that throughout her life. She has had three episodes of Missing Time, up to eight months at a time. Her experiences and what she has learned from them have prepared her for her mission. How are we to know the polarities of life unless we experience them, her quote. She moved back to Las Vegas and started the group up again in 2010. In her 13 years as a support group facilitator, <clears throat> excuse me, she has discovered techniques which will help the individual find their own answers, transmute their fear, and reach their own transfer- transformational path. Misha has been facilitating support groups at many events, including the recent Mind Control Summit in Las Vegas. She has been sharing her story as well as other men, women, and children's stories and pictures from her support groups. Misha is an, ex- an organizer of a meetup group, Starseed Awakening and Psychic Awareness Group. She facilitates two groups in Las Vegas per month, Starseed Experiencer Group on the first Friday of the month and Starseed Awakening Group, and that's on the third Friday of the month. She also facilitates three groups weekly on the Google Hangout, a live internet chat every Sunday, Saturday, and Wednesday. These groups are open and free to anyone who feels like they are experiencer or starseed. Misha presents Starseed Awakening radio show twice a month and has organized three extraterrestrial art exhibits in Las Vegas in the last three years. Misha is currently working on opening a private school for starseed children in Las Vegas, and we'll hear more about that during the show. And her main website, she has a lot of websites here, but the first one I think we'll go with is starseedawakening.org. And please welcome Misha to the show this evening. Misha, how are you? I am just wonderful. And how wonderful that was. It's such a nice introduction. Thank you. <laughs> well, my pleasure. Well, hey, I've got to read it. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, I'm amazed that you were able to, you know, usually and people just kind of cut it down because it is a long one. And it I'm is, so but fun. everything was very important in there. So when I was reviewing it, you know, all of your data, I had no idea you had gone through half the stuff you've been through. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I and My goodness. My, yeah, I know you just kind of, oh, yeah, that, that's how I am. But it's amazing because, I mean, that's hardcore. Well, know? it is. Yes, it is hardcore. Yeah. And you seem to have navigated, you know, way beyond it in such a, a loving and, and higher consciousness oriented mode. So I applaud you for that. And, and how did you get involved in this? I mean, how did you know you were being mind controlled as a child? Well, um, I'm going to just tell you a really short version of this. Um mm-hmm. First of all, my father was in a secret society. He was in a, uh, a black magic as well, uh, part of that society. I, I don't really want to mention it because I don't want to, I don't think, well, you know what, I don't yeah. think all Rosicrucians are bad, but this particular group that he was working with had to do with black magic and uh, into the aspect of um the mind control and all of those things. And like, for instance, um, he came home prior to any children being born. He came home to my mother and he says, um, I, what I've learned is absolutely amazing. And all the things that I can do is just amazing. He says, but it comes with such a great price. And he put a cup in the middle of the table and moved it with his mind. Mm. So, 
that kind of started. Now, my mother shared this with me um, after as I, as I grew up and everything. Uh, but uh, my father was also a, a mind control. He had lived in a family where he was a mind control. I, I think it has to do with the genetics, um, German, French, um, Indian genetics. Mm -hmm. So uh, that must have been the reason. I don't know why we were labeled this as to be an MK Ultra family, but I've found in my research that um, I'm not the only family. Uh, there's not a lot of them that I've heard that have had such this type of thing happen. But uh, within uh, 10 children that were born, five of them died in a very mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if my parents would have been a had the children at this time and age, they would have been up for charges because they were strange things, uh, you know, a, a carbon monoxide poisoning in a car, uh, a pneumonia, uh, a child who was hit on the back of the head uh, and contracted tuberculosis, meningitis. Um, uh, there was a stillborn and then there was uh, one that was a SIDS. So, you know, so what I found out in my, my dad actually gave me like a deathbed kind of thing. He came back actually from death mm. and told me and apologized and begged for my forgiveness and said, I'm sorry that I had to, I had to do what I did. I, I had to give them one completely over to the program. I fought it my whole life. I didn't want to do it, but they kept killing my children and they said he said that I knew that they would take all of them and I could not put my your mother through that so I had to pass over the last child well the last child would not have been me I'm number nine mm. but that child died of stillborn mm. so it reverted back to me so from then on my father started um the, um, the mind control, uh, trauma-based uh, mind control and sexual trauma to start splitting my personalities and splitting. And as he says, he says, I have to do this because, and I do remember this as a child. He says, I have to do this because you have to be ready and prepared for the pain that you're going to have. And so you can go someplace else. You have to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to go someplace else. Wow, that's really powerful. And I'm sorry you had to go through all that. And I tell you, there seems like there's more and more people that have been through these types of programs. And when you went through the split, I guess it's a split consciousness. Isn't that pretty much what they were pushing you through? Right, because, you know, if they start that splitting of the altars at an early age, the earlier the better for them, because it it solidifies and, and makes that one solid uh, split. And from there, all the other splits occur. Right. Yeah. And so when you, you know, obviously, did you, did you wind up having altars quite a few or? Well, I, I didn't actually know I did, but I did have missing time. You know, mm -hmm. as I, as I said, um, uh, I had uh, three different missing periods of my time. And when I went into uh, a lot of therapy about it and regression, um, and I, I did find out that I um, had at least three came up during the regressions mm -hmm. and, um, during those sessions that was specifically to find out, um, you know, what went on with my missing time and, um, kind of, I'm jumping ahead. There's a whole lot be before that, but I'll just tell you this and do, do I, I will say that I may end up jumping around because sometimes that's how my memories come out. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. We'll just go with the energy. I'm yeah. Nothing set in stone. So that's fine. Perfect. And if okay. there's anything you don't want to answer and I ask, feel free. Okay. I'm not, there's no pressure in any form of design, but I, um, you're very together and it seems like you've integrated on a very spiritual level, your own, your own divine personality, which is good. So yes. I applaud you for that. And, and do you have special abilities? Like your father? Oh. Um, like my father, to hit the degree of his magic, he was a magician, he was an illusionist, and he, I truly think, did the stuff, as hypnotist as well. Mm -hmm. So I did not follow in those kind of footsteps. Um, I do, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm an empath, I'm, um, well, so do psychics say, I'm a, um, a natural medium, Mm -hmm. And 
Um, I do and have in the past done some you know, clearing of people in their implants as well as I've done home clear, you know, cleaning house type thing. Um, you know, I to, to me, my most important mission is the facilitating of the groups and the being having these groups available for people, you know. So to me, that's my gift. Oh, it's a beautiful gift also. And I was very glad to meet you again over there at the Super Soldier Summit, Mind Control Summit in Las Vegas. And, and for those who didn't get to attend, why don't you give them a brief uh, um, synopsis of what, what you were up to out there? Oh, okay. Well, um, it was interesting to find out on the first night that Melinda shared with us how uh, we'd all been abducted uh, the year before. Mm-hmm. And incidentally, I did... Uh, a regression with uh, Niara, one of the people who also were, um, and uh, I did. It did come out that yes, indeed, um, I did have a memory of those that night. So wow. So there, I I think anybody who she's named better do a little regression and find out for themselves because it's there hidden, very deep, but it is there. Mm. So that was interesting to find out. So we started there, and then from from there in the morning, I had a. Um, a support group for my lab MK Ultra ritual abuse targeted individual um, super soldiers. So, th- so we had a real good turnout. Um, I think you popped in as well. I did, and I was like, "Wow, look at this crowd! <laughs> it was yeah. Great, yeah. it was wonderful." And people share their experience, and that's the whole idea about a group. And you know, people came up to me afterwards and said, "I've never talked to anybody about this," and it just feels so clearing and helpful for me to share this and that that's you know like i said that's my gift Mm -hmm. uh, to to the world is is that it's a beautiful gift yeah well you know you're speaking the language of of something that's extremely important right now on this continuum because so many people are being abducted inducted you know mind controlled in some form or another i mean when you think about it and then there seems to be a generation around our age where a lot of us, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have programming as a child. I got hit when I was older, thank goodness. But, but a lot of people have gone through programming. I actually met with a woman today who had been, uh, you know, similar to what you went through, a lot of abuse and splits happening. And then she had all these personalities that she's trying to integrate now. So that's what my question to you is. Do you allow these personalities to integrate or do you try to disable the personalities once they're created? You know, uh, through my higher consciousness, through my higher self, I have integrated them to the best the, to my of my ability. Mm-hmm. Um, there are occasions where I know from some of the physical reactions that happen with me um, or some other ways that one will pop through here and there, especially uh, in the MK Ultra group. Because I'm, I'm telling you, we're talking about some some really heavy duty stuff, mm-hmm. and that that's the um, well, actually, it's a Saturday group and it's a Thursday group, and sometimes they have it on Monday. And I actually turned it over to a lovely na- lady named Cat Bull, who is my facilitator, so that way I can go in there and get some healing myself, so I can share and and I love it, I love it. And then I facilitate for her so that she can share because as a facilitator you don't share you Mm -hmm. just listen right so it's really really been healing for me to get an opportunity to to be in and participate in that group and and i'm telling you when people start talking about their experiences it opens a floodgate for people Mm -hmm. um we had a lot of women mostly (coughs) excuse me Mm -hmm. um that um have been coming to the group but not a single group ends that the people aren't just absolutely blown away going, oh, my gosh, I really now understand things. I really realize. So if they cannot join my group, they really need to join some group because if they're dealing especially with targeted individuals and synthetic telepathy, it's a whole new ball game from what I went through. Mm-hmm. Totally. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's more of a technical thing, a technological it thing. Is. It's, yeah. it's a kind of thing that 
how do you get the heck out of it? You, you know? can't. The, th- the sad right. thing is you have to, well, at least I can tell you about mine. I mean, I'm not going to go into my own personal thing on right now, but, but, you know, I've integrated the artificial intelligence pretty much and transcended it. And of course, using my higher self over soul, super conscious in control, but you know, but the whole concept was trying to create alters for me. It didn't work because I think of my age because um, when they hit me, I was a little bit older than, than the majority of people that they, they hit with these programs, but still I feel sorry for people who get hit with this technology and don't know how to write it out. Or That's at least right. integrate it because, and the work you're doing is incredible. I, I so much appreciate what you're doing here. And you do have it on the internet, so people can actually connect in on the internet, right? That's right. Uh, on um, It's on Google Hangout. In fact, I have a group tomorrow, night, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, they just need to look for Misha Johnston. That's M-I-E-S-H-A-J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N on Google Hangout. And they can probably find it that way. Or um, if they're interested, they can go on my Starseed Awakening site and and because uh, I have an event on there. Mm-hmm. And I also have I also send out these events to a lot of different other groups. So they might even have it someplace on the, a group that they belong to. So if they just go to that link, um, I don't actually can't give a Google link until I'm in there. So. With this process, I, I wait until anybody who's RSVP, then I send them the Google link. Excellent. And, of course, you're on Facebook, so they can always get in touch with you that way, too. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's really good. Yeah, the work you're doing is very needed, um, without a doubt on that one. And, and when you first started feeling an abduction, what, what year did that happen? My first abduction was at age three. Wow. And also my my uh, MKL, the, the mind control, the trauma mm-hmm. stuff started at age three. I um, feel that the ETs that I had contact with, which, you know, they're, if people can't see the picture, they would really not uh, be able to understand it. But they can go on my website and they can see pictures of these beings on on Mm starseedawakening.org. And they can even follow along while, you know, I'm talking so they can see what they look like. But uh, it's called the Bee Gees. I call them the Bee Gees as a child. That was the name I called them. And they look like little bear. Uh, basically, they look more like big baby Bigfoots when I look back on it. Um, I got the closest picture that I could because I'm not an artist. So I found the closest picture I could on the Internet to to post it so that uh, people could see what the Bee Gees were. So they were lovely beings that used to come to me and um, take me flying. And I remember as a child being able to fly over the roofs of, of the and the, over the streets. And, and it was just wonderful. I loved it. And they were my friends. Uh, I needed this. And I know my galactic family sent me these different ETs to keep me to survive. Because what I was going through was pretty horrific. And I needed that love that I got from my galactic family. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I suspect they stay with you throughout your adulthood. Yeah, well, I had the, the Bee Gees left me about six years old, and then at six, a what I called the tall, willowy one, uh, a, a kind of abalone white bean, uh, was uh, the next contact I had, and he was with me in throughout my adult life and through my hybrid times when I was shown my hybrid children, and he was there the whole time. And I definitely felt, you know, unlike some people talk about grays, well, this was a very tall, whitish gray, if you want to call him a gray, it wasn't a gray, uh, but he was very tall, about six foot, probably, you know, as, as young as a woman, I, I'd say that would be what he was, about six foot, and a very loving, unconditionally loving being, in my opinion. I, I That's what I got, and as far as I was concerned, um, that's where I got my love growing up because my uh, father, you know, was doing the trauma and the, uh, excuse me, excuse me, could you <laughs> please go out I'm on a radio show right now? Thank you. Yay. Sorry. Like I it's said, okay. I had, I'm at a, at a festival here and, <laughs> and uh, so somebody was just talking. Okay. So, Great. Thank you. Um, so the, um, Oh, and so this being was very, very loving to me. And my mother, unfortunately, my father was going, I was going through the trauma, mind control, basic mind control things. But my 
my mother, after losing five children, stopped connecting with the children. And she especially didn't connect with me, but I, I think mostly all the children. And so she wasn't able to show love. So there wasn't love in the house. And as far as I was concerned, my ETs, my galactic family were, were the ones that showed me the love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, I think that's good. And um, it sounds like they're banging drums back there, huh? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's yes, okay. There's no way you can close the door, is there? It's um, not huge so, or anything. I mean, I just, um, I think we'll I, get through it the door okay. door is closed. Okay. All right. No, that's all right. I know it's it's uh, solstice and with, uh, everybody's partying. Okay. So bear with us, everybody. It'll just, uh, we'll ride through it. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> if you hear a partying in the background, hey, that's okay. It's part of the festivities. <laughs> So, so what exactly is a second generation experience or apparently that relates to your dad? Well, yes, my, um, my dad was an experience. Uh, he actually was on the, uh, the road on doing magic and illusions and such like that. And he, in two separate occasions had, uh, experiences, abductions during the time on the road. And in fact, one of the times was with my older sister who was his, assistant was one of his assistants because three of my siblings were his assistants on the great London ghost show is what it was called. Hmm. And, uh, so they, they were, uh, on one of their shows and it was just him and her this time. And they had a, not only a sighting, but they had, um, a missing time where their car, um, they saw something in front of them and then they blanked out. And when they woke up, the car was stopped. It was had been snowing, and um, there was um, no no tracks, nothing around them or anything like that. So hmm. they had some missing time. So, wow. I, and then our family had a group sighting where we not only had the sighting in the broad daylight, but just that evening we were actually uh, driving up a, a kind of a curvature kind of road, and of course before freeways. And the uh, one by one, everybody was going to sleep. And my sister said, well, I'll stay awake with you, Dad. And that was the last thing anybody remembers. Uh, the next thing we remember, hearing my dad scream and coming to a screeching halt on the opposite side of the mountain at the bottom. Hmm. So we have no idea how our car got from one side of the mountain to the other. Except that I did do a regression and I found out that this is one of the events where um, the the whole car was picked up. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty interesting. That. What state was this in? This was in, um, this would have been uh, probably Colorado, Utah, someplace like that, Colorado, oh. Utah. That's really wild. Wow, so are you keeping a diary of all of your regressions? Um, I have my regressions. Okay. And, and do you recommend other people keep a diary of, of when they are regressed? Oh, absolutely. And then what they really need to do is uh, start uh, keeping track of, of, um, of them. I, I actually go listen to them every now and then because as you listen to them, it pops up memories now, especially now because right now things are coming out for people to clear. And it is the most amazing year that right now because stuff is coming up and you need to clear it. And if you don't clear it, you're going to just drag it with you again and again and again. So uh, it's really good to redo those those uh, tapes and, and such and listen to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, it's all, yeah, it clears you out. And also it can make you ill if you keep um, holding all this stuff at the cellular level. Um, trauma, especially, as we know, it makes uh, it causes illness. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's not healthy at all. So I'm glad to, to hear that there's a way to kind of um, relate to that. Now, what about um, what? How do you how do you actually heal the body, though? I mean, and maybe you can't elaborate on this or not. But do you just infuse? Do you do visualizations with energy, or or what are you doing to remove or replace that? Okay, say say you're you're going through the trauma and you're removing the trauma. But what are you putting in to replace the trauma? Light and knowledge. Okay. Light and information. Those are really important because light is information. Mm -hmm. And so the information that you can um, derive from your experience, your memories, um, to release it and then then put light in it, say, and love. 
Oh yeah, loves them. because you have to forgive. I, even the my labs, the you know the MK Ultra, the the NSA has been a, a big thorn in my side. I had to forgive them. Um, and there's methods where you can actually go and you know put them on a a stage and send them love and cut the cords and and send them on their way and forgive them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I've done that in the past, the grace and move on syndrome. And um, mm-hmm. it's it's rough. I'll tell you what. Um, but it, yeah, I agree with you, though. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to do, though, for me anyway. You know, that's the biggest thing I have a hard time with myself. But um, yeah, I think you're right, though. You do need to kind of to um, ah, just forgive, I guess, is the word, huh? So, yes, yes, yeah. yes, you do. You have to forgive yourself first because there is a lot of um, guilt, especially with the, the mind control, the monarch programs, the MK Ultra, because there's, you know, there's the sex slave, there's sexual abuse, there's all these different things. And we, we tend to sometimes think that we're responsible and we're not. We were victims. We are survivors of it. But at the time, we were victims. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so Talk sad that people... all the noise. Everybody keeps coming in and out of the door. I do That's a... okay. I, I Hang in there, everybody. Just listen. <laughs> That's all right. It's not too bad. I just hear drums in the background. <laughs> it's fine. But... Yeah, it's okay. It brings uh, ambiance to the whole situation. But well, that's uh, what I was hoping. It was it's ambiance. It's background music. Yeah, and also it's it's drumming out all the maybe maybe I don't know. This is a hard subject to talk about. So hey, it's good to have some background noise, right? Yes, it it's is. Not, it's not easy to talk about these things, and especially if people have gone through hardcore mind control and and that type of thing where they're being created as alters and and you know for whatever programs. But it it, it really fi- I find it disturbing how for so, such a long time there have been organizations just doing this um, and, and getting away with it with no accountability. And for me, that's when we talk about the forgiveness thing. I have a real hard time with people not being held accountable for damages done to people's lives. Oh, I think they definitely should be held accountable. Mm-hmm. I do too. But, you know, in, in, in lieu of not being able to do that because we don't get the rights that we have, that we should have. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some women who have actually uh, gone in Senate hearings and, and, um, I, I don't remember what it was called, but it was back in 95, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And there was uh, like three or four brave women that mm-hmm. went and absolutely nothing happened. Yeah, exactly. So so you look at that and you go, well, you know what? You better just forgive and love because uh, there's there's no one's going to get held accountable. But anyway, now, I believe there will be a time sometime in the future where people will be held accountable. Mm-hmm. I think they really need to. And if I could push for anything on this world right now, well, first I would push for the dis, um, dismantling of, of the psychotronic war program. Get rid of that completely because that's destroying people's lives every single day. And then, of course, um, holding the people and parties accountable that have done damage to people's lives and taken their lives away for 10, 20, 30 years with trauma and induced trauma and all sorts of other warfare. So that's what, you know, if I if I could do something on this planet and if I had the power to do that and um, people backing me up, that's what I would do. Because there's there has to be accountability. But I also know that the universe does hold them accountable. Whether I give it to the universe, at some point in the continuum, they will have to pay for every single thing they've done to harm others. Oh, absolutely. There's that karmic karma. It's I mean, a bit. it's just like, you know, it's it's just, I know that without a doubt. So that's the one thing that I kind of look at and just say, okay, I can handle that. As long as I'm knowing that the universe is going to take care of this at some point in the continuum, I'm a little bit better about, you know, moving on to higher levels. But yeah, it's it's rough. And, and, and you doing the work you're doing, how many of the people that are experiencers get triggered in these um, gatherings? Do you ever find that they get uh, a triggered in a negative way or? Um, well, that, that, I think that happens, but I think it happens in, uh, in the opposite a lot more that people actually start realizing that I have to do something about this and, um, it, excuse me, shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a whip. <laughs> Hit them as they come through the door with the big mouth. You going. can't lock the door. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could. That's okay. The restroom's inside. It's all right. <laughs> it, it's subtle. It's it, yes. Okay. So, um, you know, there is. Um, repeat that question because I, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't even remember now. <laughs> I'm yes, so sorry. This is like hard for you. I That's do. All right. Apologize. No, it's all right. Oh, what is it about drones? Something I did want to say, because along with the different kinds of 
of the you know NSA and the CIA and all of them. Like I was saying, these the gals um, nobody was held accountable for. Uh, but there's also the secret little societies, you know, the the uh, letter pl places as well, the letter groups, uh, the Job's daughters. I was a Job's daughter. Do you want me? Do you want to ask me anything about Job's that I can remember? Not a thing. I was in it for years, and I can't remember anything. What the heck goes on in a group where you can't remember what's going on in it? I, you know, um, I was also in Scientology, which was I have a, a rather some memory of that, mm -hmm. but um, but you know you kind of get pulled into these things before you even realize that you're not supposed to be there because it's just part of the programming. Right. Well, it's all, if you ask me, any type of system like that is usually about some form of mind control or another, especially, you know, I, I have had friends in Scientology too, and it's uh, very interesting. Let's put it that way. But it's all about conditioning the mind. I mean, whatever you believe in is going to be a form of mind control to some degree. I mean, we pick and choose what we choose to believe in from day to day. So, so we are programming our minds, but mm -hmm. I find I have a problem with people trying to, to force others into believing a certain thing and then, then programming them for um, negative you know, a negative agenda. So that's where I draw the line on that. I think we were talking about, about attendees getting triggered. I think that's the question I had asked you before, but I think you answered it anyway, indirectly. So I was going to say, they sound like gremlins in the background. <laughs> yeah. There's folks. a particularly drunk gremlin in the Oh house. no, that's all right. Well, uh, okay. Keep them over there. That's funny. Well, I was going to ask you about your missing time. Now you've had three missing time episodes, eight months at a time. Yes, I'm going to endeavor to do that because uh, the ceremony's over, and so now it's just partying. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so, okay, well, um, the first one was at age 18. Um, I had no real memory of any kind of anything for about eight months, and but the first, the first and last memory I had was uh, in a. Uh, at a college in a, a cafeteria, a man walked up to me and said, would you like to be in a sleep program? We pay you for your service. So come on over and we'll, you know, pick, you get X amount of money and all you have to do is just do some sleep programs. Well, the sleep program was the beginning of, uh, of an abduction by a handler who ended up being my handler throughout my life. And he, um, in fact, took me to, um, I'm sorry, uh, he, it, during um, one of the regression and memories and such, I, uh, I found out that um, I had been um, taken, one moment, please. Okay. Crack the whip. <laughs> Hang in there, everybody. It's Litha. It's it's uh, solstice. Happy solstice. Are you there? <laughs> I am here. Oh, I made the gremlins go away. Good. All right. <laughs> Do you have like a um? Oh, All right. Never mind. So, uh, <laughs> um, so it, this sleep program was not just a, a few hours. It was days, weeks. I don't know how long that they put you under, but it's part of a mind control thing where they program you while you are under. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were programming me for different things. And so I, the next um, memory at all I have is I'm now someplace else. And it turns out I'm in Seattle. Be oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped a real important part. <laughs> um, I am a walking down the aisle and I'm wet and I'm married. Now I have no memory of the marriage. I have no member of walking down the aisle. I have family to tell me I did. And I have a license that shows me I did get married. And I even have uh, a reception that shows me that I had a reception, but no memory whatsoever. Um, during a subsequent regression, I did find out that uh, an altar named Darlene was the one that had the re had the wedding, and in fact, she made it very clear to the the therapist that um, that was not her wedding; that was my wedding. Wow. So that is why I never remembered the wedding at all. Uh, then, um, so then the very next day, he took me to Seattle, and this is what I later found out that it was in Seattle. Um, 
But the only memory I had while I was in Seattle was two, two, maybe three memories. And they're just little flashes. One was I woke up in what I think was a hospital. And it was, uh, my head was absolutely pounding, unbelievable. Like I've never had any kind of pain like that before. I couldn't even open my eyes and it was dark. And even opening my eyes, I, I, I couldn't do that. And uh, I heard other people crying and whimpering and stuff. The other memory I have of is being in a bus with uh, 12 other people or 11 other people. Um, and um, some of them were women my age, because like remember I was 19 at this time by then. Um, and there was um, young men, 12, 13 years old. And the program that plays in my mind now, Solaris, is that we go and we go to these house, big mansion houses, and we go in and clean them. However, I had no memory of cleaning them. That was just the program in my mind. But what I found out was that we were party favors for big big uh, balls uh, and, and big affairs and there were dignitary there there were politicians there there were uh, foreign dignitary um, or, um, there were military and we came in the back so what my actual found out what the actual had happened is yes we were in a bus we were taken through the big iron gates I remember seeing seeing the big big house with all the lights on taken to the back and uh, led through the back and then became the party favors for the sick SOBs that wow. attended the party. Uh, and so I, that was enough. I didn't need to know any more about that. I didn't want to. I don't blame you. That's horrific. You yeah. know, and, and, you know, when you were married, what was his profession? The man that you didn't remember marrying? Oh, he was a Navy Marine <laughs> corpsman. Oh, well, there you he go. just got back from Vietnam. Uh-huh. Well, I was going to ask about the military influence, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yes, and you don't yes. remember meeting him? No, oh, no. Oh, goodness. No, I don't remember. I don't, I could not tell you what the man looks like. Holy cow. So what did you there do, get a divorce? Picture. He took, because um, there were pictures taken at the wedding. He made sure that they went with us. When he did send me home seven months later on a bus, um, he, um, left you know i had one suitcase and he did send back some ob some items but there were no pictures of the wedding no pictures of him, no pictures of me nothing whatsoever like it never existed but i had the i went and got a duplicate license to find out that, that it did exist then of course my my parents told me it existed not only did they but my family, we've, some of my family refused to go because they said that he was an evil Satanist as far as they're concerned. And they thought that I had been, um, I was probably being under drugs or something. Well, yeah. indeed I was, or I was the altar. I don't know. I don't know. Or a little bit of both. Being that he was a Navy Marine corpsman, I do remember I, I had, now this was the uh, third memory I had. I had a memory. I woke up, and I was laying um, on a on a bed, and I could hear somebody. And I looked over, and he was like, um, "Talk." He was talking on the phone, and I couldn't see who he was. I was everything was all blurry. I was could hardly even open my eyes because of the throbbing pain mm -hmm. in my head. So, um, but I heard one thing. He said. He said. I'm doing my job. Don't I always bring them? I always bring them. I'll be there. That's hmm. the thing that rings in my head. And I, I remember that. So I truly think it wasn't just that he was a mind control himself. I believe that he was part of the, the program. Mm -hmm. Certainly sounds like it. What year was that? That was in uh, 1968. Okay. 19 so the chances are they weren't using any type of psychotronics. It was more about it drugging probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. To well, alter your personality. Propranol or I don't know how yeah. you that. Actually, yeah, there is that one drug that just completely, I guess, um, people just completely surrender when they get, uh, yeah, subjected yeah. to it. So that's just nasty. I'm sorry that you went through that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah, it is. That they can actually 
make you marry somebody you don't have any idea who it is and um and then you know take your uh, kidnap you and take you someplace and then when they're through with you send you home on a bus with this memory that uh, my husband doesn't love me and wants a divorce and i woke up on the bus um uh, way past i mean i was like maybe a quarter of the way home when i woke up mm -hmm. And uh, because they had had us, they wanted to do a stop and they said, everybody off the bus. And I'm waking up and I'm going, my God, where am I? What am I? Where? Whoa, whoa. And then all little flashes came to me. And then I finally, the, the program that was going on in my head was that um, my husband doesn't want me anymore. His parents want to send him to medical school. And he only way they'll do that is if he gets rid of his wife. Wow. What a program. What a screen memory, huh? What a screen memory, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're pretty good at screen memories themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they say that the ETs, well, uh, back engineering technology, ET technology, they've learned very well. Mm -hmm. Yes, they certainly have. And that's why, um, especially where I've been with the psychotronics, but I know their nasty little program, believe me. I, I know it better than they do, probably, a lot of the programmers. So they can't pull anything on me. And it's a sad when I think about how many people they probably can pull this over, which um, which is very concerning, obviously. So uh, right. what about what about have you ever dove into your past lifetime personalities and have there have you ever noticed a, a bleed through effect between a past lifetime versus a screen memory of what you've gone through with mind control? Well, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And I had some past lives where I was a really bad person. I also had some past lives where I was um, a good person, but I believe that some of my karma is uh, my own self-induced karma that I needed to clear out some things mm -hmm. in this lifetime from other lifetimes. Um, I have been the um, the sacrificee and the sacrifice and the sacrificer mm -hmm. in past lives. So I have been the ex, uh, the um, um, oh, what do you call it torturer and the torturee mm -hmm. in past lives. So you know what? None of us escape any of that darkness. It's mm -hmm. it's all part of our learning that we need to do. We need to have this, you know, as this as the multidimensional beings that we are, we need to experience all facets of, of life, right? That's uh, positive, negative, and, you know, how else are we going to become light unless we know what darkness is? That's very true. Yeah, we wear many hats, and uh, even though we don't recall some of those lifetimes, and a lot of people may not believe in past lifetimes, but, yeah, you can't be perfect in all of them. No, a doubt. no. A lot of people will say, you know, feel that they are, but it's just because they haven't remembered their other ones. Yeah, let's all happy really thoughts, Peter Pan. Dig. You gotta happy dig. Thought. You gotta <laughs> dig. You know, and, and there's there's wonderful methods where you can uh, you can go into the positive, and then you know you're gonna um, now you want to know, well, okay, what's your spiritual lesson in that life? What's your are you there? Sorry, uh, what's your um, comic karmic lesson in that lifetime mm -hmm. and it and when you do you get a lot of answers mm -hmm. oh absolutely yeah i think the more that that people dive into their cells and their cellular memory the more they'll realize i mean it's a complex system that we function in our bodies and our minds and our souls and our spirits you know it's just really amazing and then to top it off we have like this type of technology that interfaces and then creates more craziness you know it's just ridiculous so you know, thank goodness there are some people out there who don't get hit with programs like what we've been hit with, and then they can just have like semi-normal lives, right? Yes. Opposed yes. to like going through what we've been through. <laughs> oh yeah, but you have to have uh, some people go through this in order to be able to tell their story so that other people have someone to share with, you know, so yeah. they're not alone. Because so many people after, like I'll, I'll speak or something, that, or have a, a show, they'll write me and say, you know, I felt like it was just me, that I was losing my mind, that it was just me that was experiencing this. But it's not. There's there's hundreds, thousands of people out there experiencing right. these things. Oh, yeah. And they're dealing with so much trauma each day. I mean, each day becomes a nightmare if they don't get it under control. 
So, yeah, it's, it's really sad. It's an epidemic and something that really needs to be taken seriously. Of course, um, the parties involved, the majority of in government and covert ops, they don't want to come forward, and they never will. I don't, I don't ever see them coming forward. They don't have that kind of a conscience. So they're getting away with it, and it's been working for a very long time. The only way I see it is to flush them out and disable the technology. But, you know. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's the way I see it. You know, first thing of a line of defense and military is take out the communication system, right? Well, that's their communication system. It's the psychotronic code. So and I was going to ask you, do you come from a military family? No, I do not. Okay. So, yeah, there wouldn't be that type of a contract associated, but you did have the other thing going on. Okay. Just curious. And, and can you elaborate a little bit about what happened with you and Melinda? Oh, sure. And you know what? Let me just answer that uh, other one quickly. Um, I do not come from a military background. However, I do have a member in my family, and I'm not going to say exactly who it is, mm -hmm. but that was very, 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 very involved in um, in black ops and uh, and uh, uh, just, I guess it would be back engineering, you know, mm -hmm. with things that that person did. Okay. I never talk about it. That's okay. It was somebody. Right. So as for Melinda, you'd like to uh, know about the experience Melinda and I had? Yeah, I'm curious if, if you're comfortable talking about it. Yeah. Oh, sure. Share that with everybody. Well, you know, Melinda and I was, uh, were writing at Real Real. Actually, we were researching a book uh, and we were doing all, all the research on uh, to write a book about uh, the, uh, actually, I always forget all of the, the things that we had in there. So I've just got a little thing here that tells me what it is. But um, so we spoke with uh, many different uh, special forces, ex-military, different ones like that. Uh, um, and we got their stories on, well, it's frozen it won't work okay <laughs> i'm on my own i won't do that uh but it was uh it was the alien abduction and the connection between the military uh my lab uh abduction the covert uh harassment and surveillance of the abductee mm -hmm. because with my labs they are very interested and they want to re-abduct us they want to know what things we've learned on right there misha can you hear me? Are you muted? Now that it's quiet. <laughs> uh oh. Hang on. Hang on for a second, everybody. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Ah, come back. Hang on, everybody. Trying to get the call back. All right. Hang on there. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Okay. She's still, I may have to hang up and call her back. Bummer. Call dropped. Hang on, everybody. It looks like we dropped uh, Misha here. Hang on just a second. Looks like we're having some technical issues. If I can get her back. For my next trick, <laughs> ah, it's Lisa, it's Solstice, that's why. All sorts of stuff going on. Still trying to get her back. Hang in there. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on at her end. Let me try it one more time. Let me give it a second. All right. Yeah, she's still online. Seems like we're having some technical problems here. Sorry about this, everybody. Sometimes we do have issues. Oh, I'm having a hard time getting her back. Blast. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Let me try another phone. I don't think the mobile phone's going to work, but just bear with me, everybody. Sorry about the inconvenience. What a drag. Damn you, Skype. Can't get a hold of my guest. Okay, Hi. here I am. Hi. I don't know what's going on with Skype. 
No, it wasn't Skype. Okay. The laptop that I'm on, I thought was plugged in, and it wasn't, and oh. it just died. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, we're heading for a break, so hang with me there, Misha. Everybody, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're going to start perfect. switching our.